Hi everyone. So in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to create your Google site that can be used as your ePortfolio for the class. The first thing you want to do is go to Google Sites. Um, probably the easiest way to get there is to go ahead and search for it and go to Google Sites sign in page. In order for this to work, you're going to have to already have a Gmail account. Gmail accounts are free and there's plenty of tutorials to tell you how to how to sign up for a Gmail account if you need that. So I'm going to go to the Google Sites. You can see I already have some Google Sites I've created. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a new site. To do that, we're going to go click on this plus button. OK, so from here, we have our first page. Uh, we can start by changing our theme. I'm going to change it to be something that I like. It does not matter what you make your theme as long as it is a professional uh, looking portfolio, that's fine. I recommend keeping it simple, not a lot of pictures or, or images, just something plain that looks professional so you can use this uh, to show employers one day. So I'm going to pick the impression theme and I'm going to change the background image. By searching for a blank white image. So there we go. So now we have a pretty clear, plain uh, graphic style to our web page here. So for this first one, I'm just going to make this my name. Okay. So that gives us our first page. Now you're going to have to create multiple pages for your ePortfolio. And this will just be the first page that we use. Now we can. there's a bunch of different layouts we can insert into this page, which we'll be using to create and design our ePortfolio. Pages, we can add a new page. So for instance, I can add a new page. I can call this one Resume. All right, so here I could have all my resume information that I can simply put into this page. Perhaps the easiest way to do that would be do something like this. Um, maybe delete the, the picture there. We can extend our text box out. And what I would do is I would just copy and paste a resume you've already created, hopefully that you have on file that you can use for this. If not, Now's a great time to start building your resume. Go ahead and input your information. I'm going to add one more page, Code of Ethics. In the beginning of this class, you did create a Code of Ethics. And what I'm going to recommend is that you take that Code of Ethics that you had in a discussion post and use that as the basis for your code of ethics that you put in your ePortfolio site. So once again, we can just use our text box here. And you know, I would take a copy and paste that code of ethics, maybe rework it a little bit, put that right in into here. Now you notice I'm using a certain text right here that looks like it's made for a title. If we want to, we can just change that something different. And there's obviously other options you can do with the text and formatting, things of that nature. I'm not too picky on the format that you choose as long as it is something that is professional looking and, and can communicate the information well. So you can have a home page, which you could actually, uh, if you want to, we can just make the home page uh, the same as the resume, or you can just have a title page. If you want to have like a little bio, we could do that as well. So it could have Brian Bell, short bio of who I am. If you want to include a picture, you could. Uh, make sure to include your resume as one of the pages and the code of ethics. Okay, now the last page is perhaps the most interesting. We're going to call that one 
let's call that badges. Okay, so we have our badges here. So what this page is going to do is it is going to be a, a way for you to look back on some of the information that you've done, some of the activities that you've done, and to display that hopefully one day for employers to see sort of the competencies that you've learned, the skills that you've learned uh, throughout this course. So one of those competencies would be your infusion pump testing. So you would want to go to insert right here. You're going to type in infusion pump and you want to include a link Preferably a YouTube link to the video of you doing the preventative maintenance testing for the PC unit and the pump unit for the infusion pump. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and pull up, let's pull up the SPC BMET YouTube channel. And I'm just going to pull up a demonstration video for us. Let's see. Service mode. Ah, here we go. The purpose of okay, so here's, let's say for instance, this is the video that I want to use to document my infusion pump testing. For you all, you're going to need two separate videos or one video that contains both the PC unit and the pump unit. So we can take that and we can insert that right there. Or if we want to, we can even insert a video by going here. And this is the preferred method because this will look a lot better if we do it this way. So we go ahead, we can put our video right here and we can even drag it right underneath our infusion pump test. Having the link there is nice as well, just in case people want to click on it. But this way you're going to have infusion pump. So this is the skill that you're demonstrating. This is the evidence for that skill, which is a really nice thing for someone who's reviewing your work to be able to see. They can see that, hey, you've worked with infusion pumps, you've worked with testing equipment, you've worked with all these different things, and you've proven that you can do these types of activities. So you want to put that there. Now, as you go and as you create this, I want you to create two sections, one for the infusion pump and a second section for your electrical safety testing. So in this class, you'll have done two key skills. You'll have learned to test an infusion pump and you'll, you will have started testing electrical safety and medical equipment. So those are going to be your two sections. So in order to add that second section, you're going to go to insert electrical safety, and you're going to do the exact same thing where you will click down here, you will go to add a YouTube video, and you'll add that video of you doing the electrical safety test. Um, you can also add relevant images and documents when necessary. Now, ideally, once I review this, what I can do is I will send you, so there's there's a way to publish this, you can publish this here, but I, I wouldn't want you necessarily to um, finish it just right now, because if you've done these things, uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to sort of verify, uh, the instructors at SBC want to be able to verify that you've completed that skill correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you what's called a badge. A badge is a micro-credential, sort of like a, uh, a non-credit certification of the skill that you performed. So let me get out of this site and go back to my other Google sites. Okay, so here's an example of a completed site. Brian Bell has information about me. I have my resume set up, although I don't have anything in there yet, but that's the idea. A code of ethics, and then my badges. 
which will have all my different uh, testing tests that I've done and evidence of those tests. So here, for instance, is our electrical surgical performance testing badge, which you can earn later. We have medical device security badge, infusion pump test. So this is a badge that you can earn in this class. And the way you would earn that badge right now is by you have to complete the PC unit test and the infusion um, and the pump test for the Alaris 8100. So if you have those two videos, I will send you an image of this badge, this credential here, and you can put this badge into your portfolio as evidence that your skills have been evaluated by someone at St. Petersburg College. And the same thing goes with the electrical safety test. There is a badge with that, and I can send you that. Now this is the first time we're trying these badges. This is something that we're implementing this year into the program. These badges have been reviewed by people in industry. So these are things that people in industry value. These skills are skills that we've talked to people who are working in the field right now. And they say these are some of the most important things you can learn. And we want people who are able to say, hey, we have reviewed this student's ability to perform this particular skill. So this is one way that you can sort of stand out and say, I have performed this skill. I've done this and I have a credential to show that. Now, okay, one key thing is, in order to get this credential, you will have to be the person performing the test. Now, if you did this as a group and someone else was doing the test, that's fine from a grading perspective. You will not be penalized, but in order to get the actual credential, you have to be the person performing the test. So I hope that gives you a little quick rundown of how to set up your ePortfolio for this class. Once you're done, you'll want to publish that. There's different publishing settings, depending on who you want to be able to see this. So let's see. Um, you can request that public search engines do not display this site. You can work on the URL, the URL. Um, so badge examples are our URL right now. So I'm going to publish this. And once the site's published, you're able to share that link with whoever you want to. So in this case, you're going to want to put this, submit that link to my courses as a published site. If you run into issues with this, please contact me. Don't, you know, don't hesitate. I'll try to help you out and coach you through the creation of this ePortfolio. The goal of this uh, is twofold. One, research has shown that as you reflect on the work and the skills that you've done throughout a program, that it helps you retain and learn information. So as you're going through the SPC BMET program, you will continue to build this ePortfolio, continue to build on your skills that you've learned in previous courses. And number two, that you be able to take this document uh, and use this as a way to promote yourself whether it's on LinkedIn, in an interview, um, as you talk to people, this is something you can say. As they say, well, do you really know how to do this? And you can say, yeah, sure. I've actually created uh, a video of myself doing this skill of using an electrical surgical generator or of testing medical device uh, security or of doing an infusion pump performance test. So it's a really powerful tool that you can use uh, with employers and professionals. And I hope... Uh, as you create your ePortfolio, everything goes smoothly. If you have issues or have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.